Welcome back guys to this amazing episode of Christianity over Islam with some shaman as a Muslim faithful was left speechless concerning the letter of course to the Gentiles. Let's watch this amazing video. There's there's this thing here is is in Acts chapter 21 where Paul goes to the seven temples of Asia and uh, he goes there it turns out that these Jews whatever they were yeah they were under the law and Paul's gone there and telling them to end their laws and they've got angry because that's the one that you want you mentioned because that's the key one that people use there were Jewish believers meaning those who believed in Jesus yeah who are zealous for the law yeah. and they were told now you had to read it carefully since a lot of Muslims don't read it carefully if you read Acts 21 18 to 24 it says they've been told that you go around among the Jews living among the Gentiles yeah, telling yeah. them that they need to forbid no more circumcise their children and abandon the customs of Moses but yeah. reread that carefully it says they've been told you say that to the Jews it's not about the Gentiles is it true Paul that when you minister to Gentiles and you yeah. go among the Gentiles and the Jews there you tell the Jews ethnic Jews hey don't get circumcised and forget the customs of Moses no you can't find that in any letter of Paul and here's my challenge out of love for you as a brother in humanity. If you read Paul's letters, I will challenge you to show me where he's telling ethnic Jews don't get circumcised, or rather is he addressing Gentiles, you don't need to get circumcised, especially for salvation, because circumcision saves no one. He's talking to Gentiles in his letters, whereas the Jews are being told, you're going around telling the Grecian Jews who live among the Gentiles, they don't need to keep the law of Moses. So what do you have to say to that, Paul? But then, let's read it. So you don't take my word for it. We're going to read Acts 21. Maybe Avery can read it for you. Acts 21, 18 to 24. Avery, read it for him. So on the following day, Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. After greeting them, he related one by one the things that God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. And when they had heard it, they glorified God, Okay, point, said, pause right there, Avery. Did they say, damn you, Paul, for preaching a different gospel to the Gentiles than the ones we preach? Nope, they praised God for it. Okay, so did you catch it, Ali? They have no problem with the gospel of Paul to the Gentiles. They glorify, that's the chapter. Now, you may reject the chapter, that's okay, but you quoted the chapter. So let's read the chapter in context. Did these Jews say, Paul, damn you for telling the Gentiles they don't have to live like ethnic Jews and get circumcised? Or did they glorify God for his ministry? Chapter what? 21, he said, yeah. one, the chapter you quoted, 18 to 20, and he's going to get to the point that I want to make. Uh, again, the next day, Paul and the rest of the of us yep. went to see James and all the elders were present. Paul greeted them and reported in details what God had done among the Gentiles, yeah? Through yeah the really? And when, when they heard this, they praised God. So you mean they, they damned Paul and saying, God damn you, Paul, or they praised God for what he was doing with the Gentiles? That's no, the chapter they, they praised him. They, Praise it for what, what for what he was doing with the or what he preached Gentiles. to the Gentiles, right? Yeah, they were they were they were, they were happy with him for that. And, and okay, that. but that's my point. Well, let's take it step by step. So they had. Do you agree? The chapter you quoted, not me. You brought it up. They have no problem with his message to the Gentiles, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Now let's continue. What their problem is? You read nineteen. I'll keep reading twenty to twenty-four. Yeah. When, when when they heard this, they praised God. Then they said to Paul, You see, brother, how many thousands of Jews have believed, and all of them are jealous, uh, jealous for the law. They have been informed that you teach all the Jews who live amongst the Gentiles to turn away these from Jews, the Jews. They heard these Jews who believe in Jesus have heard you teach who? They have heard that, that you teach who? That you, that you teach all the Jews who live amongst the Gentiles. Ah, so they don't have a problem with the message to the Gentiles. They don't need to get circumcised and keep the law of Moses yeah. to be saved. They're having a problem. These Jews that live among them, are you telling them that as ethnic Jews, they are no longer to get circumcised? Are you serious, Paul? So that's the accusation. That's so now let's see what Paul says. Telling them not to circumcise the children or live, live according to customs. What shall we do? They will certainly hear that you have come that the Jews will hear, so do what I tell you to do. There are four men with us who have made a vow. Take these men, join in their purification rites, and pay the expenses so that they can have their heads shaved. They Then everyone will know there is no truth in these reports about you, but that you yourself are living in obedience to the law. As for now, the, before you, now, before you before move on, that was 24. You cannot show me a single place and anywhere that Paul wrote that he himself as an ethnic Jew, as an ethnic Jew, he, ethnic Jew, yeah. did not keep Sabbath 
or the dietary restrictions as an ethnic Jew. He did what his point was that the Gentiles are not required to live as ethnic Jews and keep these customs that defined the Jews as a distinct group from the Gentiles. They don't have to do that for salvation and neither do we do it for salvation. But as ethnic Jews, we still do those customs in honor of the God of Moses, whose now law has been perfected in Christ. But now, what about the Gentiles though? Now read 25. What did James say about the Gentiles? Read 25. As for the Gentile believers, we have written to them our discussion, no decision that they should abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. Yeah. Okay, now as you pause there, you notice they're referring to something previous, right? Yeah, yeah. And then what are they? They're referring to the Council of uh, Jerusalem in Acts 15. And what was the debate about there? There were Jews, Pharisees, yeah. telling Gentiles, you got to get circumcised, keep the law of Moses to be saved. Now, Paul and Barnabas said, no, that's not true. Now, I want to ask you a question. Peter and James and the yeah. Apostle Jerusalem, whose side did they take in that issue? Paul's. Yes, they did take Paul. So then why would you say that Acts shows that Paul destroyed the law when the very book of Acts you're citing yeah. shows that James and Peter and the other Jews, the Jewish elders and Apostle Jerusalem, agreed with Paul that circumcision doesn't save and Gentiles don't need to get get circumcised because they don't have to be ethnic Jews. They need to trust in Jesus Christ as we do to be saved. But as ethnic Jews, we as ethnically Jews, we still honor the God of Israel by keeping those parts of the law of Moses that Gentiles don't need to. Where's the problem? The problem is, yeah, these people were, were not they in Asia. Peter, Peter, James, none, none were, were they in Asia. They just actually helping him. All, yeah. all right guys uh, so far from the, from this debate and then one of the things to note is that most Muslims have issues with the teachings of Paul when even when they are not even Christians they believe that uh, the Old Testament and the letters of Paul were corrupted that their Paul was not sincere or rather he was teaching against the law of Moses and then this Muslim faith came out to debate and some shaman concerning the uh, the stand of some Jews, some certain Jews concerning their first uh, teaching. And then um, the some took him to the book of Acts uh, where um, some after Paul finished preaching to, to the Gentiles, he went back and then some certain Jews meet him and they, they had no problem with his teaching, rather they glorify God for the life of Paul. And then the issue of um, the Gentiles, that um, some certain Jews were saying that the Gentiles need to be circumcised before they can be saved. And Paul is now trying to tell them that they don't need to be circumcised, they don't need all, the, all these um, rituals for them to be saved, that they are being saved by uh, by Jesus, that they don't need all these all this circumcised um, rituals for them to be saved. Let's watch this amazing uh, debate to get more details. Why did you quote Acts 21? You quoted it. What do you mean? No, Didn't well, you, yeah, you quoted Acts 21. I know, but what I'm saying to you yeah, is, is these Jews of Asia are complaining. Now, when we read Acts 21 in context, it didn't agree with you. It disagreed with you, didn't it? Because the accusation was not the Gentiles. You're teaching Jews, Jews among yeah. the Gentiles. And then what did James do? Did James agree with Paul, though, that as far as the Gentiles, yeah, they don't have to get circumcised. They do these no, other things. We no, the the Gentiles did, did not need to keep the laws, but it was the Jews, but these but these are the ones that these these Jews are, are the ones that are angry. Saying, why is he saying to us? No, but Paul did not say I said that to the Jews. That's misinformation. That is a lie. That's a rumor being spread. How do you know? How do you know? Because Paul not only went and showed obedience to James' wishes in Acts eighteen eighteen. Without James around, Paul was already observing the Nazarite vow. Acts eighteen eighteen. So he was already observing the law without having to do so due to the peer pressure of James in Jerusalem. Acts eighteen eighteen. So why yeah. is he keeping the law when no one's on his, uh, you know, on his shoulder saying, "Hey, hey"? Acts eighteen eighteen. Read it. Uh, uh, Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. Then he left the the brothers and sisters and sailed to uh, Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off at uh, Kentri before of a vow he had taken. Oh, wait. So notice the same Priscilla and Aquila that he mentioned in Second Timothy four, right? Yeah. And they're here with Paul, and Paul is now fulfilling a vow that he took by shaving his head, which is a Nazarite vow, right? 
Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well. And that means that's the same vow that those four other men were observing in Acts 21? Yeah. And so Paul already is observing the law as he is going among the Jews who are living among the Gentiles, showing that he is compliant to the law, so the rumors are a lie. So can we put Acts aside now? Because it didn't help your case. If you if, if you read Revelation chapter 2, verse uh, 1 and 2, yeah, and he's talking to all the Jews of Asia, the churches. Yeah. Revelation 2, no. Revelation 2 says that Jesus praises them for testing those who claim to be apostles that were not. But Paul himself said the same thing in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He warned the Corinthians of false apostles. So why do you automatically assume that in Revelation 2 verses 1 to 2, Jesus had in mind Paul, when here it's apostles, plural. So if it's Paul, who's the other apostle? Because it's more than one. There's more than as one. Opposed, as opposed There's to a... assuming, well, yeah, yeah. if I can make the point, as opposed to assuming that like Jesus, Paul is warning believers in Turkey and in other parts of the then known world like Corinth, there are false apostles. So Paul is in perfect agreement with his Lord, warning people of false apostles. But now you got to show me the theology of Revelation contradicting that of Paul. Whereas I can show you that Paul and Revelation agree that God is triune. Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh, who by his blood redeemed us from sin. So how can Revelation be condemning Paul when Revelation's theology agrees with Paul? Revelation 1, 5 to 6. Maybe Avery can read it. John agrees with Paul. It's the blood of Jesus that washes us from our sins. John agrees with Paul that Jesus is the unique son of God who's omniscient. And that he is the Alpha and Omega, meaning without beginning, without end. All of which agrees with what Paul says about Jesus. And you want to then assume that Ephesians, Jesus is praising them for condemning Paul because he's a false apostle teaching false doctrine. And yet John's theology agrees with Paul in the book of Revelation. Can you read that in Revelation 1, 5 to 6? And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of kings on earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Now, does Paul also teach that it's the blood of Jesus Christ that has ransomed us from our sins? Last time I checked. And does Paul also teach that Christ is the ruler of the kings of the earth because he is the head of all creation? That's correct. Okay, so how are you going to then tell me that Jesus is praising the Ephesians for condemning the apostles, meaning Paul and whoever believes like him, when the theology of Revelation agrees with the theology of Paul? And I can give you more. I mean, I just gave you one. What about Revelation 5, 8 to 14? And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain... And by your blood, you ransomed people for God, for every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on earth forever. Now, before you move on, Avery, John says the blood of Jesus, the lamb, redeemed not just Israelites, people from every language, every tribe, <clears throat> all nations to rule with Christ, kings and queens, and serve Christ. And who did that for them? Jesus, by his blood. And the four living creatures and the 24 elders are actually worshiping Jesus because this is a song that they sing to him. It says they sang a song, right? That's right. But now read 11 and 14 to see now if this agrees with Paul's theology. Let's see if it agrees. Then I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, mm -hmm. saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Mm -hmm. And I heard every creature- Now before you move on, Avery, I want Ali to hear this part. Now notice the language. John says, I heard every creature where? In heaven on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them. Now I want Ali to see what John just wrote. Every creature 
in all of creation, every creature in heaven, every creature on earth, every creature beneath the earth, every creature in the sea, all things in all creation. He includes every created thing imaginable. And what are they doing, Avery? Saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Now, let me ask Ali this. Uh, uh, John just saw, saw a vision. I know you don't believe it. That's fine. But in this revelation, which you are quoting from, John yeah. sees a vision. Every creature in all of creation from the beginning and the end, that means you and me, he saw all of us. So there's all creation on one side. Jesus is not part of them. Jesus is on the side with the Father, showing that he's uncreated, which is why he's worthy of the same glory and worship the Father receives. Does this agree with Paul or contradict Paul? Yeah, it kind of agrees with it. So then how could the apostles that Jesus praises the Ephesians for condemning as false apostles include Paul when the theology of Revelation agrees with Paul's theology? Wow, that was an amazing one. <laughs> I think most Muslims here, as I said earlier, have issues with um, the teaching of Paul. You know, they believe that um, Paul was teaching the Jews and the Gentiles. I mean, the Gentiles living among, among the Jews, wrong uh, in doctrine. And then also they believe that uh, the Paul's teaching was against the law of Moses. And then his Muslim man brought out this argument. And then Sanshamo now was trying to tell him that what Paul was teaching is in alignment with uh, the book of Revelation. And you know, the book of Revelation was written by John, one of the disciples of Jesus. John the Beloved. And so, um, St. Shaman tried to tell him that John agreed with Paul that it is the blood of Jesus that saves. And so he took him to the book of Revelation where the earth uh, argument was established. And then um, also, um, so, um, Paul agreed that Jesus is the Lord of Lords, which the book of Revelation also affirmed to that, that uh, Jesus is the Lord of Lords, and then it is the blood of Jesus that redeems men from every tribes and tongues. Guys, what do you think? At the end, you can see that the, 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 the Muslim man, he became silent and uh, he, he could not answer any more questions. He was not direct with his answers. Guys, what do you think? Let us know what you think in the comment sections. Let's leave a reply in the comment section don't forget to share to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos thank you